I just want to review really quickly for the benefit of members of the public and guests um, a little bit about the public art, uh, art and public places ordinance, which was established in 1992. Um, this is funded with 1% of the county's general obligation bonds, except for the library bonds. So hooray for everyone who voted on this last cycle of bonds, we are fully funded. Um, and these, the 1% of the geo bonds will go towards the purchase of purchase or commission of visual works of art for county facilities. Uh, and then just uh, our county arts board vision statement, public art, art has the power to inspire curiosity, encourage contemplation, facilitate dialogue, foster community engagement and create a sense of place. And these works are located throughout the county and it's a means of enhancing the quality of life through the acquisition of exceptional works of art by artists at various career stages. So a um, little background for the selection committee process. Um, each public art project has a local selection committee that is chosen uh, through what's known as our stakeholder policy. So we have the user agency representative or representatives. This would be the building or facility where a public art piece will be located. And um, neighborhood representative or representatives, we reach out to the neighborhood association members to make sure that they're involved in the process and then also the design professional associated with the project. So uh, once again, this is at the West Central Route 66 Visitor Center on the west side of Albuquerque, off of Central and Atrisco Vista Boulevard. And kind of give you a sense of um, the project. Again, this is for the folks on the committee. This is uh, just kind of a review, but um, this is a rendering of the facility on the north facing side. So it gives you a, a sense of um, some of the exterior areas on that uh, north facing side. And then this is a recent aerial photograph um, taken from a drone of the completed facility. And this is uh, also a drone photo looking towards the main entrance to the facility as well as the amphitheater area on that lower part of the screen. So these were all areas that uh, were considered for locations for the public art project. Um, and then just a review of the committee's goals. Uh, this was a call open to New Mexico based artists and the goals, the committee's uh, stated goals of the project are to create a landmark public artwork, create an original artwork that represents the past uh, present and future identities and of the cultures and communities along Route 66 and to have a strong visual impact for both motorists and pedestrians. The 1% budget for the project is $22,500. And just a quick review of some of the sites and uh, what the discussions were with the committee members. Um, we're looking at some of the areas here, um, the paved areas by the north facing side, uh, the committee also was considering areas around the amphitheater and the staging area uh, and some of the areas around the stage, behind the stage, are, were possible sites as well. The committee was fairly open to what the artists um, submitting proposals would think would work best for their selected art. And I would like to introduce Robert Davis, one of our finalists, um, who will present on his concept for the Route 66 Visitor Center Public Art Project. So welcome, Robert. If you'd like to uh, jump on in and introduce yourself, you can take it from here. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to apply to this project. And it's so exciting to be chosen as a finalist. And thank you for signing up to be on an art jury, public art jury. Uh, thank you, Kent, for herding up all these fine people. Um, I'm a lifelong New Mexican, as you probably know. I won't go over too much of my bio because you all have that. Um, uh, very interested in uh, art in New Mexico and placing sculptures and trying to be 
uh, the guy that makes stuff for New Mexicans. Uh, I applied for this project because I think the idea of Route 66 Visitor Center is kind of brilliant. And when I learned that the location was up on Blueberry Hill, I got even more excited about possibilities. Uh, now that I've seen the new building, that is spectacular, by the way, I'm even more excited about having a chance to place my work uh, up there and be a part of the Route 66 Visitor Center project. Um, I want to place an artwork that is exciting, fun, and remarkable, and not so easily forgotten. Uh, intend to deliver a first-class artwork on time, within the budget, and one that does not need any maintenance and without any delivery or installation problems. I intend to deliver, oh wait, where am I? Oh, as I wrote in my application, I'm old enough to remember roadside shops along Route 66 that had old dead cars up on blocks to make them look like they were popular places. And of course, when you pulled off, you realized that they were just old cars up on blocks, but you already pulled off, so you're probably gonna spend some money anyway. Um, the work I'm proposing uh, gives the nod to this, um, but it also speaks to uh, the freedom given to working class people with the uh, advent of national highways. Um, all you needed was a car, a road map, and gas money. When you got there, because you brought your own car, you could easily visit Yosemite or Grand Canyon. You could take the family along. There were restaurants and motels, but there were also grocery stores and campgrounds. I bet many of us still get that tingle of freedom and excitement when we hear the words road trip. Yeah. Although some of us are probably kind of jaded by now with that one. Uh, I built a model of what I would like to make for the visitor center. And I have it here. Um, my plan, as you know, probably from looking at my stuff, I'm the guy who wants to make the car on a stick. I'm going to take an old car, place it on an angled stand. See if I can get it up there so you guys can see it better. We have a lot more pictures of this, so we'll, we'll be seeing more, more of it. It's got a rocket in, built into the back. And it is a patina car, not is actually kind of a popular thing right now with old cars and it saves having to like clean it all up and paint it. Right. But, um, it looks cool. So it's faded paint with patches of smooth rust for the most part is what it is. Um, I'll dig deeper into that paint thing, uh, later. Uh, I wish I could just hand this around to you guys so you could just play with it. I'm sorry that we have to do this by zoom, but, on the other hand, it's what it is. Um, so let me put up some pics and run a video that I hope, uh, hope will help you see the detail better. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, let's put up the drawing. So this is the drawing I submitted. And you can see that it actually does look kind of like the model. Um, the, um, yeah, let's go on to the next one. Let's just let everybody look and not do too much explaining. We can just escape out of that. There we go. All right. We, in the way. Let's just go ahead and, oh, yeah. yeah. We'll just run through these. We can come back to them if you guys want to in the question and answer period. Okay. 
There it goes. Let's go back to. What do you want to go back to? Oh, well, let's just stay right, right there. Everybody can just sort of look at that. Um, there's quite a bit of sculpture made from scrap, uh, recycled metal, and a lot of it is very handsome stuff. Uh, not a lot of rough ed edges, more clean lines, a nice finish. This is what I'm going for with this piece, taking found objects and assembling them into a coherent whole artwork. The driver will be formed from bits of scraps of metal, not the simple profile that I have here in the model. It was just too tiny to try to manipulate a little tiny torso in there. Uh, when I was imagining the model, I was thinking red car and brown rust, which is what you see. But now that I've been looking at this for a week or two, I think it needs more color and visual differentiation than the model has. And I would like your permission, if selected, to have some leeway in the paint scheme, depending on the color of the actual car. I may be able to integrate some of the original paint into the final look and uh, possibly add something like maybe some orange to the fins to brighten them up a little bit. Um, the car in the model is a 64 Ford Fairlane. My ideal car is an early 60s Mercury Comet, which is a compact car. I got the Fairlane for the model because it is larger and makes the model bigger. It's pretty much the same shape as the Comet. A Ford Falcon or a Chevy Nova would look about the same. The actual car will depend on what's available within the budget. There will be no engine, transmission, gas tank, rear axle, and I will cut out any metal that I think is not required for the sculpture. This will get rid of the fluid holding parts of the car and reduce the weight significantly. The undercarriage surfaces will be treated with rust converter to make them mostly black. There will be some stainless steel trim on the edges of the fins. Um, can we go back to the camera for a second? There we go. So this is one of the things that you learn when you make a model, right? It's really important to make a model of something like this, because when you, you think, oh, well, the rusty undercarriage of the car will be great. Well, there, that, it'll look good, you know? And then you think, you look at it, you go, ah, I don't think so. I don't think that's going to look that good. I think that needs to be kind of blacked out. So it's not so, uh, you know, when you're walking around looking, you're going to look up at this thing. And I think it'll just be a little bit nicer if it's black or mostly black and not, not rust. And that's easy to do. Um, uh, where am I? Oh, so the mounting of this thing, the stuff that holds it up, it depends on the chosen site and the above and below ground features of the site. Um, so it, it's not a difficult engineering problem to make a thing that holds this up. It's kind of like a big light pole that holds a traffic light kind of yeah. thing, similar to that. Um, if there's stuff underground and we can't dig the hole, we can put it on a pad. And maybe putting it on a pad is sensible. It just depends on, you know, landscaping. You know, if you want to landscape all the way up around it, you might want to put it on a little post that has underground footings rather than above ground. Um, and, and we can work that out. Uh, my favorite location for this piece is on the north side of the building just off the existing concrete walkways and centered on the second floor window. Um, there are other good sites. This place is amazing. Um, and <laughs> the view is so good. It's kind of hard to imagine somebody's been looking at your sculpture. But um, <clears throat> so there's lots of good places to put it. I think that um, some of the ones around the parking lot already have landscaping. And it seems like kind of a shame to go and mess that up to put a sculpture over there. But it's that's all possible. So I'm not wedded to any particular spot. I just think right there on the north side of the building is that's what I would pick. Um, I would like to mount it so it's fairly close to the ground. Can we go back to the little drawing? Yeah. I have my faithful assistant here who makes everything go for me. Uh, <laughs> Hang on. The drawing. There it is. As you can see in this drawing. The bottom of the tail fin is just about six inches above ground level. And I like that because everybody could kind of get close to it and get a selfie with it and stuff. And of course, you guys might not like it because people can walk into it or grab it or touch it. And I think it's still pretty hard to climb on. But uh, that's always an issue, too, with uh, sculptures, large sculptures. So 
that can be, you know, adjusted if it needs to be higher up or if you want it to be even lower, we could probably figure out a way to do that maybe by tilting it a little bit. So, um, there's that. Um, I think, um, oh, and then, you know, placement wise, I think people are going to want to be near it and get pictures with it. Yeah. So putting it someplace where there's a lot of car traffic or something might not be the best thing, but it, that's, it could be out in the middle of the parking lot. Um, I think that's about all I have. If you guys want to ask a question. Oh, I have the budget. Oh, yeah. So I did a budget. <clears throat> And um, as I previously stated just now, I'm not going to go over budget. So whatever happens in here with these numbers, it's always going to add up to 22.5. And uh, um, it's, um, I guess it is what it is. I think I'm proposing to do quite, a, quite an ambitious work for that amount of money. And, uh, um, and the reason for that is because I really want to do it. And I think that, it, you know, in this particular plan, um, I'm, I'm fine with it. And thank you once again, Robert. Thank you, Applausos. everybody. And Bravo. I, yeah. Keep my fingers crossed. All right. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.